has a strong tower right just run into it and they are safe and it just confirmed the message to me this morning <clears throat> and the title is there's power in the name of Jesus Amen. there is power in the name of Jesus I know that rolls off our tongue and it sounds good and it's it, it's almost like uh, you know a, a, just a phrase or something but there's something behind it there's there's something behind it that's real because there is power in the name of Jesus. And the testimonies this morning just verified that. Each one. There's power in the name of Jesus. Power to deliver. Power to heal. And power to bring us through. Praise God. My text, the primary text, is in the second and third chapters of Acts. But we're, before we get to that, I just want to flesh out a little bit about this name of Jesus. We know these scriptures, but in Isaiah, if you'll turn with me to the seventh chapter, the 14th verse. We're gonna skip around a little bit, so bear with me, if you will, for a few moments. <clears throat> I wanna go back and what the Lord prophesied through Isaiah and through some of the prophets. I won't go through many, but just a few. In the seventh chapter of Isaiah, the 14th verse, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us. Don't you like that? I love that this morning. God with us. Amen. Go to the ninth chapter of Isaiah. The sixth verse says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, yes. Counselor, yes. the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government shall and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish, establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the, seat, the zeal of the Lord's host will perform this. Oh, praise the Lord. Go with me to the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. And Isaiah continues to prophesy about Christ to come. It's wonderful they prophesied about it. He prophesied about it. It is wonderful for us. But it, it's just more glorious for us to live in the new covenant era. Amen. That Christ has come and he has brought salvation, praise God, through his blood. Praise the Lord. He says in the 53rd verse, Who hath believed our report? Yes. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed, we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Oh, I love that this morning. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. And yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb from the slaughter to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? Who shall declare his generation? Oh, the redeemed shall declare his regeneration. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he, was, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit. In his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. 
He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. I want to stop right there and go to second chapter of Acts. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus that left his home in glory and put on this robe of flesh and suffered the indignities and, and the reproach and all the, the, the things of mankind, suffered like no man on this, ever, this earth ever did, yet was perfect in every way, sin-free, sinless. And he paid the price for your sin and my sin. His blood, praise God, his blood, praise God, brought me life and you life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The song, Each Drop of Blood, brought me a million years. Oh, praise God. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you came. And we know what he suffered and came through. But on the day of Pentecost, when this took place, the baptism of the Holy Spirit fell, came down, as a cloven tongue of fire and sat upon them and they all spoke in tongues and prophesied and, and all those Jews that were there for the Feast of Pentecost heard what was going on, heard them speak in their native language the glory of God, that these were unlearned Jews that had never traveled outside of Jerusalem. They, they were just there and, and the Holy Spirit, the, the power of the Holy Spirit was so great that they were convicted when they heard this. They, at first they mocked and said, what is, are these men full of new wine? And, and then Peter got up. Peter, the most unlikely spokesman of the disciples, gets up. The one who was weak, the one who denied Jesus, gets up and preaches a message that brought conviction. Yes. That brought conviction upon all those Jews. And he says, In, his, in the 22nd, or third, I'm sorry, 31st verse of the second chapter, in the part of his message, he was, he's seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus had God raised up, wherefore, whereof we are all witnesses, therefore being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye see, now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. And we go on to, I'm not going to read the rest, but when they heard it, their hearts were pricked and they said, men and brethren, what must we do to be saved? Praise God. Peter brings the indictment. He brings the indictment against them. This man, God raised up. This man, God chose. This man brought salvation. You crucified him. No, oh, praise God. In the next chapter, we see the fruit of that effort. If you go with me to the third chapter, I know we're reading a lot this morning, but bear with me. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, <coughs> late in the afternoon. And a certain man, lame, man lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. To ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple. Asked an alms. And Peter. Fastening his eyes upon him with John said. Look on us. And he gave heed unto them. Expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said silver. Silver. And gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God and all the people saw him walking and praising God. In the name of Jesus rise up and walk. Oh my God. What a miracle. Laying there for many years. You know your muscles, your everything atrophies. You're even being able to stand your weak. But no, the, the Holy Spirit gave him the power. He was standing. He was leaping. He was jumping. He was praising God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, praise God. There's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, help us as your people. We know the scriptures. We, we know these things. But Lord, give us a faith that believes in the name of Jesus with power. When we pray for folks that come to the altar, you've heard me say many times in the prayer, not our hands, not the oil, but faith in what? Faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. Faith in the name of Jesus, Lord. Help us to believe that, oh God, with all our hearts. Oh, praise the Lord. It is the name of Jesus, that powerful name. Oh, praise God. There are other instances in the 16th chapter, you don't have to turn to it, of Acts, where Paul and Silas are called over to Macedonia in a dream, in a vision. And they come in contact with Lydia, a seller of purple, and, and she is saved. And it says in the 16th verse, And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination, an evil spirit, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying, fortune telling. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. In the same hour he came out. In the name of Jesus. In the 19th chapter we find an account of these vagabond Jews, exorcists, they went around delivering people, supposedly, and took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of one Sheba, a Jew, and the chief of the priests, which did so. And he and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Oh, hallelujah. Jesus I know and Paul I know. But who are you? You see, to use the name of Jesus, there's got to be relationship. There's got to be something within you, praise God. There's got to be a faith within you to believe in that day. We can say, oh, the name, it's not a process, it's not a formula. Oh, no, there has to be something within, something inside. There has to be a connection. Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the word of God tells us in the, that one man prevailed on those seven, tore off their clothes, and they, they fled. He defeated them. Oh, praise the Lord. It takes, it takes faith in the name of Jesus. Oh, praise God this morning. Oh, Lord, would you help us? Would you strengthen us? In what we see. In Ephesians, we find a scripture in Paul's prayer for this church, Ephesus. <clears throat> he talks about the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought 
in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And you may know what is the greatness, exceeding greatness of his power. Praise God. When he raised him from the dead. That power was the power of the Holy Ghost. That power that resides in us. It's the same power. It's not a weak Holy Ghost, but it's the same power that resides in us. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. Now listen, try and digest this. For above all principality, power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Put all things under his feet. All things, power and dominion are under his feet. And we are his feet, the body. Have put all things under the church. We have dominion. We have power, not in ourselves, not in our abilities. But in the name of Jesus this morning, because of what God did, because of the power in that name, we have victory. We have dominion. We have overcoming power. Oh, praise God, which is his body, the fullness of, of him that filleth all in all. Oh, Lord, thank you. Praise God. In the Philippians, Paul writes, or Colossians rather. And he is the head of the body of the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Preeminence. To hold the first rank. To be highly exalted. That Christ has the preeminence. Lord, Jesus, have the preeminence in our lives. Amen. Amen. That when we call on the name of Jesus, we know something is taking place. Sometimes it's not instantaneous healing as we read in these, these cases, but something is taking place. The, the walls and the, the construction of hell shake when the church prays in the power of the Holy Spirit and calls on the name of Jesus. When we call on that precious name, that powerful name of Jesus, oh, praise God. The enemy wants to water it down and say, well, it, it's not working. Things aren't turning out the way they hold on. That precious name of Jesus is power this morning. That name of Jesus will overcome the enemy. That name of Jesus will make a way where there is no way. The name of Jesus is powerful. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Praise God. In 1 Peter, he writes, Bear with me just a moment. In the 22nd verse of the third chapter, he says, Who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and power being made subject unto him. Jesus. Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. Jesus, our elder brother, sits at the right hand of the Father. Oh, praise God. Interceding for you and I this morning praying for us, interceding with the Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. <clears throat> he has the preeminence. The fullness is in Christ Jesus. Oh, Lord, thank you that we know you not 
as a historical figure. We know you not as just something that we study in a book, but we know you in a personal way. We know you, Lord, and we have a relationship with you. It's not just, well, we go to church and, and you know, we learn about the good things that he said and, and all that. No, there's something deeper than that. <clears throat> there's a relationship <clears throat> that we understand and, and we understand what he, his desire is and we feel his presence with us and he speaks to us and he, and he works in our lives and he delivers. And we heard testimonies, how faithful he is, praise God, and that he delivered, he heals, he manifests himself, he brings us out of darkness, opens our eyes, praise God. How? How did we come to the knowledge of Christ? Did we learn it? Was it something that we studied? No, it was revelation. It was revelation that Jesus is the Savior. And we were lost and undone. I think of the, the in Isaiah that the vision he sees when he comes in contact. The vision of, of the Lamb upon the throne, Jesus on the throne, and he said, I am a man of unclean lips. I am a man of unclean lips, oh Lord. Thank you. You saw me, Lord, even when I was in such a state, when I was lost and undone, when I was without you, when I denied you, when I, I turned my back the other way, you saw me. Yes. Praise God. And you brought me into your light, into the kingdom. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us this morning as we think about what he has done. There's power in the name of Jesus. That power is turned loose. That power is exercised when we pray. When we pray in the spirit, when we pray in God's way that <clears throat> there is relationship with him. Oh, praise God. Oh, Lord. Well, you know, someone say, well, you know, I prayed. I prayed in the name of Jesus and, and nothing happened. And, and I would say, Lord, help us. Help us. Give us the faith. Yes. What's lacking in our prayer? Maybe it's faith. Maybe it's it's a lack of faith in the name of Jesus. Can, is he able? Can he do? And we read many things. Uh, Brother Steve had a message uh, just a short time ago. He read that scripture. And if he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask for things. And we read that and say, well, that's wonderful. That sounds really good. The problem is believing it. The problem is our focus and holding on to that. Why? Because it's the power of Jesus Christ. It's that name that secured our pardon, that secured our victory. It's that name of Jesus that overcomes Satan and sin and death and hell. The name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, for that precious name of Jesus this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies that are new every day. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Philippians. Paul writes, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, but that which is through faith, the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Oh, praise God. Paul, what are you saying? You wrote half of the New Testament that I may know him. I don't want to be satisfied with superficial knowledge. I don't want to be satisfied with it a superficial relationship. I want to know him. I want to have that intimate relationship. Amen. Praise God that he says that I might be, I might know the power of his resurrection, the Holy Spirit power, that it is alive and well in us every day, that it moves us, it directs us, it gives us authority over the enemy, to tread on evil spirits, 
to hold on to his unchanging hand. In the sight of, of everything seeming lost, oh God, you're in control. We know you're going to make a way because we believe. There's power in that precious name. The fellowship of his sufferings, we don't want to hear about that, but the fellowship of his suffering, as Jesus was, was rejected, was mocked and scorned, we are going to be rejected. We're going to find people that are maybe courteous, but don't believe. That's okay, Lord. The fellowship of his sufferings, self-denial. You know, the enemy of the flesh wants to do something and, and the Holy Spirit within us. Conform us, Lord. Conform us to your way. Being made conformable unto his death. Amen. Oh, Lord, help us this morning. There's power in that name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. There's a song we hardly sing anymore. I just recite the words to you. It says, take the name of Jesus with you. Take, take the name of Jesus ever as a shield from every snare. If temptations round you gather, breathe that holy name in prayer. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. It kicks me back many years ago, just a teenager, 15, 16 years old, and my father was dying of cancer. And last time he was able to speak he was we had him home at a hospital bed in the living room my mom and my uncle bailey around the clock and would actually administer pain medication shots it seems like a dream when i think back to those days and i remember talking to my dad it was about six o'clock i was going to go visit with a friend for a few minutes, for a few little while. And he grabbed me and he said, son, he says, I want you to take care of your, your mom and your sister and your grandma. That's all he had to say. I was fighting back the tears because I know what he was saying. I said, I will, Dad. I came home later that, that evening and he was struggling for breath. And I saw that scene and it just, it just cut me, cut me to the core. And you know what I had to do? Something within me. I gotta get a hold of Jesus. I gotta get in communion with the Lord. And I went downstairs, we had a little bathroom downstairs, private. I closed the door, I kneeled down, and I said, oh Lord, would you help me? I don't know if I can go through this, would you help me? Would you strengthen me? And that song, take the name of Jesus with you as a shield from every snare. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name. Oh, how sweet. And the Holy Spirit began to just come all over me and bless me. As if to say, I'll give you the strength. You're going to make it. It's going to be okay. Had to get in contact with him. There's power in the name of Jesus. Power to help us through the difficult times in life. Power to help us through the, the circumstances that we think, no way could I go through that. It's impossible for me. I don't have the strength. I don't have the courage. But somehow the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, called alongside to help. 
Help me up, praise God. There's power in the name of Jesus this morning. Power to overcome. Power to strengthen us. Power to bring us all the way to glory. Oh, pray. Aren't you glad for that this morning? Oh, praise God. It says God gave him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Someday, someday, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. He is Lord. Praise God. He is Lord. Oh, how I should die. He is Lord. Given him a name above every name. All what he suffered, God exalted him and given him a name above every name. When we call on the name of Jesus, it is no small thing. Oh, praise God. We're calling on the Savior, the Redeemer, the one who shed his blood for you and me. The one who loves us beyond our capacity to even comprehend. Oh, praise. The one who gave it all, praise God, who laid it all out, who died on the cross. So when he was reviled, he reviled not again. He didn't, he didn't answer back. Oh, praise God. Aren't you glad for Jesus? Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you that we know you, Lord, not as a figurehead, not as a historical figure, not as a hero, but we know you as a personal Savior. We have communion with you, Lord. We can speak to you. We can hear your voice. It is not a figment of our, figment of our imagination. It is not something that we conjure up. But it's the presence of God that comes upon us. Oh, praise the Lord. How many things... How many things has he done? How many situations has he brought you through? Yes. Monday night before we left, we attended my granddaughter's concert in Powell Hall. And on the way down there, <clears throat> got back up on 55 uh, near Bayless. We were coming over the hill. I was starting to pick up speed because it was 60 mile an hour speed limit. You know, the construction that's going on there is two lanes. And lo and behold, one lane was completely stopped. We just, just came upon it and it was just that quick. And I slammed on the brakes. Didn't think of who was behind me. Just slammed on the brakes, trying not to, to avoid hitting the car that was stopped in front of me. And this, there was a Jeep behind me that, that couldn't stop in time and went around to the side. And I saw him out of the corner of my eye that he swung around so he wouldn't pile into me. And the next thing I saw in the rearview mirror was, was cars that were hitting. Heard the, the sound, the impact, and glass flying all over the place. God was right there. His hand was right there. Didn't have time to pray, say anything. It just happened that quick. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. There's power in the name of Jesus. We call on that name. Lord, would you protect us this day? Would you watch over us and keep us, Lord? Would you bring us through safely? He is faithful, is he not? Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're so good. When we sing there's power in the name of Jesus, I want us to believe it. I want us to exercise in that power. Oh, God, you're able to change things. I don't care what my carnal mind says. I don't care what the enemy says. I don't care what, what you know, backslidden uh, people say. I, I know there's power in the name of Jesus. Praise God. He can change the heart. He can move the checkers. He can do what no man can do. Praise the name of Jesus. May the Lord encourage you this morning. May our faith grow. May our faith just reach a new level. A new level in Christ Jesus. Praise God. There's power in that precious name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. May his name be praised.
Amen. 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 Amen.